What's good, bro? What's up, bro? Hey, how you been, man? Uh, we, we, we pushing, bro. We pushing forward. We trying to make something happen. Um, and setbacks is here, but we keep going, bro. We keep pushing forward. Sure. Happy to be back here in Texas. It was longer than I expected, but back. You got here for sure, bro. Now, for people who aren't familiar with you, who are you? Uh, I'm a graphic based out of Miami, Florida. Originally from Brooklyn, New York. I uh, spent time half and half. Uh, I'm just out here somebody that's trying to, you know, build a legacy and establish something that people can really fuck with, you know what I'm saying? For sure, bro, for sure. Now, with you being from Brooklyn, New York, how was it for you growing up out there? Um, initially, it definitely was one of the, the most defining experience I feel like in my character because I got a, di a, diversity, a diversity, I got so many cultures and so much shit going on and it was my introduction to a lot of things including hip hop for sure you feel like whether I wanted to listen to hip hop or not it was, it was always around me and all this shit I was seeing the, the way people dress, the music, the TV, you know what I'm saying you go somewhere in Brooklyn, you feel me? And you always gonna hear a hip hop record banging on somebody's car, a lot of shit. Bro. You know what I'm saying? And see it too because that's the home of hip hop. That's where hip hop starts. So I don't even look at just music as hip hop. I look at the graffiti artists, you know what I'm saying? The the, the culture as far as the way people yeah, dress, sure. you know what I'm saying? The, the, the dancers, all types of shit. So you're gonna get all that like on the day that you're born if you actually move around. That's lit, that's lit. Now, uh, did they influence you to make music? Uh, to be honest, no. What influenced you? Um, that influenced me to love music, like hip hop music specifically. Um, it was a real start of that, but it was just really like I wanted to do behind the scenes with music. But when I started fuck with that. I just felt like I was like like writing and poetry and shit like that. But you know what I'm saying? Like I didn't take it serious. Right. My teachers would tell me, "Yo, you know, you just, bro." I even had teachers like chasing me to work. Begging me to come back to to school, yeah. like oh, I believe in you, you graduate, and I was like, fuck it, I'm making money, doing what I'm doing, I don't care, whatever. Looking back on that though, do you thank them for like trying to give you the extra push? Oh hell yeah, because it took me longer than expected, you know, to, to finish the school. I had to do a lot of shit, night school, all types of moving around and taking classes two, two times and shit like that, but. Um, college didn't work out, I don't want to fuck with it, but it, it helped me build structure back in my life. Right. You know, for example, people were pushing me, they believed in me more than I believed in myself. And that sense of, you can do more than just whatever money you make now. For sure, right for sure. Now. That's a fact, bro, that's a fact. Now, you moved to Miami right, right before high school. How was that transition like for you? Uh, it was fucking super different. That's what like, it was completely different because I was like, it was just like everything I kind of knew was flip upside down and like it was just completely different like I just everything I knew was just not the same and it was a whole different culture it's a lot of um especially where I was living there's a lot of Spanish culture out in Brooklyn no and uh in Miami in Miami and in Brooklyn it was really diverse like you had neighborhoods of every single race and genre and you feel what I'm saying like ethnicity or you got this neighborhood that neighborhood and then people go to the same schools and go to the same parks and everybody's kind of so you gotta taste everything. Right. If I wanna go eat pizza down the block, I could do that. If I wanna go eat Chinese, when it was Miami, it was just like, I felt like it, people didn't even listen to the same type of music I listened to. Man. I had Jordans, people asking me if I was wearing Halo shoes. What? But yeah, like they didn't even understand. So, all right, what, all right, so what kind of neighborhood did you move to in Miami? When I moved, it was a neighborhood where it was like, a lot of like, I would say like, people that were first, they were immigrants or they were, First generation Americans. Okay. Like okay. they came to this country or they, they just were born, the first generation Americans. Right. And the the, the the type of way people were dressing, it reminded me more of like Cali. People used to rock like, or New Orleans, people used to rock like the Reebok soldiers. Right, yeah, yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? That's when I started seeing a lot of gold teeth and uh, all this shit. And, like, sure. it, some of the culture grew on me, for sure. But it was at that time, a lot of it was like, and I'm wearing some uh, leather, some Jordan leather, low top, and they're asking me, he's like, one of the most popular shoes is the Haley shoes. That's crazy, bro, that's crazy. So let me ask you this, what's, what's one thing you would say you had to learn when you moved to Miami? Um, not to trust everybody. Hmm. Sure. That shit, like, reassured it, like, I met a lot of shady people in Miami, and that's not to just, 
there's shady people everywhere. Right. But it was like the shit would be like my friends and I had friends try to rob me when I was 16, 17 Damn. years old. And these are people that in my house, I go to school with them, I walk with them, I vibe with them. That's crazy. So I mean not to get to too far into details with this, but like how did you know that was them that, that tried to rob you? Oh, because I caught them in the action. Oh, you caught them? Yeah, oh, wow. Because I was on probation at the time. And it was raining. And I believe in God, so it was like, I'm leaving certain things right. that connect. So I was like, taking the bus to go to my program. And it was raining hard as, hard as shit. And it ended up, like, lightning almost hit next to me. I don't know, let me go back home. I don't want to pour. Because in Miami, when it rains, it's like hurricane shit. Yeah, facts, facts. Especially in the summer. I mean, like, I don't know if you can out there, it's like hurricane. It looks like there's a storm outside. Right. So I'm like, fuck, I look like standing here, almost got hit by lightning. Let me go back to the crib, and that's when I caught them. Shit. Like, these are people that I was like, I was like serving up to, like fucking with. Right. You know, we played basketball, went to school together. Damn. And I started seeing like more and more betrayal from more people, like, and even up to here, like, I ain't gonna play a victim, but it's like, actually, really taught me like, to look twice with certain facts, individuals facts. and shit like that. Sure, bro. Now, shit, before you began really taking the rap serious, I seen that you were fighting like a serious case. Oh, yeah, you yeah. You know what I'm saying? Can you kind of speak a little bit on that if you can? Um, so, what made it serious was I kind of got blessed with the fact that when I did get arrested, you feel me, the cop, I was resisting this shit because. It was like, I felt like I was doing, I was in self-defense, you know, with the situation. So, you know, um, I had to the cop, whatever, you know, like, I'm resisting the shit, but, you know, they, he could have charged me for even a higher, higher case, but he ended up, you know, giving me something like a battery case and shit like that. But in, in Miami, regardless, you have to serve jail or, or, or cop out on those type of cases. Right, like a probation or yeah. even jail time? Like, it could have been more, but it was like, I kind of like, got like lucky in a sense because they seen I was the first time offender as an adult. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, but I already had just got arrested a couple years ago, I was considered a minor. So, but it was just really like simply like somebody trying to fuck with me and then me tell them like, yo chill. And shit, I, I ain't gonna lie, like I went looking for it at that point. Also after that situation was over with, maybe a day or two went by. No, no, it was the same day, like he kept taunting me and shit. And I was like, he was like close to me and shit. Like okay, that. so it was right there, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And you feel me? Then I just swung on him straight up, like with no respect. And I really didn't think, you feel me? I was gonna knock him out. And I knocked him out. He was out. His face was like all fucked up. But I kept hitting him because I'm like, dude was big. I'm like, I'm not trying to. My mom like, I'm not trying to let this get off the floor. Right. But at the end of the day, it was like that shit turned. I I got into so many fights before like clubs and shit that they would just kick you out. Yeah. You know what sure. I'm saying? But the, when he get knocked out, when he got knocked out, they call it ambulance. When the ambulance comes, the cops. And then the security was worried for him because he was knocked out in front of the club for like a good 10 minutes or so. They tried to wake him up. Damn. The, oh. the cousins came up when the police officer came. The cousins was like, it's not his fault. They were saying that it was his cousin's fault. I thought they were bitches that he was with. It was two fine bitches and it was his, it was his cousins. Oh, what's up, defensive? Like, it doesn't matter. One's on the floor, right. one's standing. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So when you when he's knocked out at this point, how are you feeling around that time? To be honest, I'm like, I knew I fucked up. Yeah. I knew I fucked up. I'm not some. That's like something I'm not gonna glorify. Like, damn. You know, like that was a huge game changer. And the fact that I was like, I gotta start taking music seriously. And shortly after that, everything started to like transition, like for real. Because at the end of the day, I'm still like. That shit could be down a dark path with like, now I caught a case here, I already knocked it out, served my probation, now I got this shit. But not only that, whether he, he wasn't showing up for the, uh, the arraignments. Right. And, but the DA was trying to push it because it's a violent case. Right. You know what I'm saying? They it's still carry on with it. Yeah. Okay. So they still trying to push this shit. I got lucky that when we went to court, they told me, what do you want to do with this? And I had a public defender at the time, I said, I really thought he was going to show up and then it would be a lot like, they didn't have nobody to speak as a witness on the DA's part because he didn't show up to the We ended up showing up to the arraignment. All dressed up, with his mom next to him. And I'm like, I'm over here like in a white tee, 
a, a Hanes hoodie, a fucking jeans and Jordans thinking I'm going home. Like, yeah. No respect, I didn't dress up for court. I got lucky because they were looking for the paperwork, but the DA had lost it. Damn. So the judge was like, he's a Haitian dude, shout out to him, his name is Ham or something. He's like, I'm going to give you a second to get the paperwork together. And the fuck the shit. Case is missed. And my lawyer ended up telling me, Yo, you're super fucking lucky. I've never seen you. Like, shit happens like that. But she said, I've never seen with my eyes. That shit happened. You should go play the lot right now. Yeah. So after that, I was like, let me start to fucking stop putting myself in. Because at the end of the day, I'm not going to say I'm looking for it, but I can choose better environments right. to be in and better ways to handle shit. For sure, for sure, for sure, bro. Now, you got a song, Born Like I'm Number 14. Right. You feel me? A tribute to Gerald Green. Yeah. How did you come up with that song? It's crazy. That's a throwback. Um, yeah. So, Gerald Green was playing for the Heat at this time. Um, shout out to him. He's a clothing man in Houston. Uh, legend. I think he's still playing for the Rockets. So. Sure. He'll forever be a Rocket no matter what. Yeah, for sure. But, um, he was playing for the Heat, and I ended up wanting to write the record about him because, to me, I was inspired by him because he was always that dude. Like I remember when he won the dunk contest, and he kind of floated around for team. But he, every time I would turn on the, uh, I used to just watch the NBA like late nights on the West Coast, right? And I would see him balling with the Suns, or when he was with the Nets, he was balling like. So I was like, damn, this dude, and he has nine fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. He's missing yep. a finger, and on his shooting hand. So. To me, I was fuck with that because I fuck with the underdog story a lot of times. Right. Especially somebody that overcame the adversity with nine fingers and got no excuses and won a dunk championship. And at that, that time in Miami, he was actually playing pretty good. You know what I'm saying? He was playing, playing pretty good, but I fuck with him deeper than basketball. Right, right. And he ended up actually reaching out because people kept tagging him. That's hard. And then he wrote back to me, y'all appreciate it, bro. I appreciate a kid with that song was hard. This and that. That's hard. Shout out to Jerry Green, man. Hell yeah. Now, Deucer Records. Right. You know what I'm saying? Deucer Gang Records. How did you how did you create this this record label? So really like, you know, we started off like as a collective and shit. And we went our different ways. But um like what it is, is like it, it, it wasn't just a, a crew anymore. And I was a full blown record label. And right. what it stands for is, you know, everybody has their end in the brand board. The most important thing is not the individuals that were involved or who's involved in like the biggest thing is the message behind the shit and the people that are going to come in and actually embody that shit and push forward. Because it's deeper than just music, it's a slogan. It's deeper than just people. It's, do you stay authentic? Do you stay authentic? Okay, it's deeper than a crew, any of that shit. It's like, it's a movement for anybody who's involved with my shit, anybody who's just like superior. Because right. I'm trying to make this shit bigger than me. It's not just about lives. It's about the message, do you stay authentic? Sure, sure. You know what I'm saying? And do you believe in this as some shit? Because that's a mantra I feel like to live by. You Staying true to yourself. Yeah, yeah. For sure, bro. For sure, that's dope. Now, you have a single, Charms, right. featuring Texas legend Lil Flip. How did this feature come about? So, basically, like, I had this record, and I was just, I just knew I wanted to put somebody on it. It was one of those records where I felt like this is a feature record. Right. You know? I don't know, I'm just honest with you. You have your records where you do yourself, but like, yo, I want to put somebody on this shit. And I was just thinking, and it happened at the coincidentally at that time, I was just watching a lot of flip interviews. Just a lot of flip interviews because I was watching a, a, an interview from Troy Ave, and he was saying that, like, little flip, like, really took the independent hustle to another level. So when he said that, I really didn't know at what level because I caught him when he was very commercial. I wasn't here in Texas. Right, right. I wasn't prevalent in the South at that time. Like I heard him when I was in New York. I started fucking when I moved into Miami. Oh, you, you heard Lil Flip out of New York? Yeah, the first time I heard Flip yeah. was I was watching the movie Fast and Furious. Okay. And it was like a pen play. Yeah. And after that, then I started, you know, because at that time it was just mixtapes and videos on MTV and BT on YouTube. Right. You download the shit on Napster or whatever. You try to hear it. So, I started fucking with Flip right there. When I heard that shit, I was like, well, like that was a transition of the South really going commercial and taking like, that's when T.I. and Jeezy and all these people start coming out, but I was fucking with him from before that, but I didn't understand what he had done here. He already done some shit that was legendary yeah. in Texas before he even signed with the Majors, and that doesn't necessarily, I feel like, get the shine that it deserves because there was no ma major, um, major machine pushing that. Because I believe so, like two, three hundred thousand with the 
another company. Yeah, he put a lot of groundwork in, bro. That's why you have to, you know what I'm saying, salute him for a Texas legend. For sure, for sure. So that's on big, bro. I appreciate it. I appreciate it.